Now this subject is called a word to the Hebrew Israelites. Now I chose this subject, a word to the Hebrew Israelites to go into because there's been a lot of discrepancy within the Hebrew Israelite community about the name of the Most High and the name of who we all call Jesus Christ. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go into the scriptures and I'm going to show according to the words of the Most High that we truly do not know the name of the Most High, his true name and the name of who the world calls Jesus Christ. Now, this is going to be a very controversial show. It's going to be a very powerful uh, show and it's going to be a very important show because in this subject, I'm going to show that all these different Hebrew Israelite groups uh, that you see on YouTube and scattered throughout America truly do not know the name of the Most High. And I'll say this, that many of these different Hebrew Israelite groups that claim that they have the pure Hebrew claim that they speak Hebrew, uh, they don't have the name of the Most High either. And I'll explain why. Because if you had the true name of the Most High, there wouldn't be so much diversity and differences between all the Hebrew Israelite groups. I mean, you have some Hebrew Israelites group, uh, groups calling the Most High Yehoah, Yahweh, Yehovah, Yah, or Yahweh. And some Christians call him Jehovah. Then you have some Israelite groups referring to the Messiah as Yahushua, Yeshua, as I used to refer to him. And you have those that just refer to him as Christ. Now, if we had the true name of the Most High in Christ, all Israel would be speaking the name of the Most High in Christ throughout the entire world. There wouldn't be no discrepancies about what his name is. I mean, you have some Israelite groups referring to the Most High as Ahiah, and some Israelite groups referring to who we consider Christ uh, as uh, Yeshia, um, Yahweh Shai. So that shows you that there's a difference uh, between the Israelite communities that um, we truly as a nation do not have the name of the Most High in Christ. We truly don't because if we did, there wouldn't be so much diversity in the name of the Most High. From Yah to Yahweh to Yehovah to Yehovah to Jehovah to Yahweh to Yahweh Shai to um, Yahoshua, Yeshua, Yeshia. We would all be speaking the same thing and we would all be speaking the name of the Most High uh, collectively as a nation. Now, the first scripture I'm going to go to, I know a lot of you out there are probably shaking your heads. I know, I know a lot of you out there are, are probably, you know, amazed at this subject that I'm going to bring up. But I'm going to show you according to the scriptures that we truly don't know the name of the Most High in Christ. Now, let's go to the book of Deuteronomy, the 28th chapter. We're going to start at verse uh, 46 to show you how we lost our original tongue of Hebrew, which the prophets spoke, which Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob spoke, and the 12 tribes of Israel spoke. We don't have that pure language and that pure dialect today uh, on this present earth as we speak today. We don't have it. So these different Israelite groups claim that they have the pure Hebrew. And this group claims that they have the pure Hebrew, but none of them truly do because there's so much diversity and differences between these different Israelite groups. How are you going to have the truth? And how are you going to have the true name of the Most High in Christ? Because we don't. And as we go along in this subject, I'm going to show you that we don't. But that will be given to us in the kingdom when Christ steps back. Uh, steps his feet back on earthly soil to reign as king of kings and lord of lords I'm going to show you that his name and the heavenly father's name will be revealed in that day Now here is Deuteronomy the 28th chapter verse 46 And they shall be upon thee for a sign and for a wonder and upon thy seed forever That's talking about the prophecies and the things proclaimed to the children of Israel by Moses 47 Because thou serveth not the Lord thy God with joyness and with gladness of heart for the abundance of all things. Therefore shalt thou serve thy enemies, which the Lord shall send against thee in hunger and in thirst and in nakedness and the want of all things. And he shall put a yoke of iron upon thy neck until he hath destroyed thee. Now this was talking about slavery. 
when the 12 tribes of the nation of Israel came into captivity and slavery, okay, here in America and scattered throughout the, the entire world by way of cargo slave ships, these are the things that's going to happen to us. 49, and the Lord shall bring a nation against thee from far, from the end of the earth. As swift as the eagle flieth, a nation whose tongue thou shalt not understand. A nation whose tongue thou shalt not understand. Now, when we came into the Western Hemisphere of America, the English was the dialect in which the captors of ours, I mean, the, the, yeah, the oppressors and the slave masters spoke. Initially, we didn't speak English. So that was a dialect that we learned being in the house of our captivity just here in the Western Hemisphere. Our brothers and sisters down in Spain, I mean, uh, uh, Puerto Rico, they speak what? Spanish of Negro descent. Our brothers and sisters in Cuba, okay, they speak Spanish. In Dominican Republic, they speak Spanish because of their captors and their slave masters. As well as our brothers and sisters of Negro descent down in Central and South America, they speak Spanish. And in Brazil, they speak Portuguese because of our slave masters. And our brothers and sisters up in Canada that do speak French and some speak English. Why? Because of our captors and our slave masters. So the, this was a tongue in which we didn't initially under, understand. But being under the house of our captors, you know, we learned to speak their, their dialect and their language. Which meant that our original tongue was stripped from us. So we don't have the original tongue in which we spoke when we lived in the land of Israel. Now, all of you out there can agree on that, right? Now, from there, let's go to the book of Deuteronomy, the 20th chapter, verse 64. And the Lord shall scatter thee among all people from the one end of the earth, even unto the other. And thou shalt serve other gods, our brothers and sisters, dealing with various different philosophies and other religions, as I dealt with in the subject Egyptology. Which neither thou nor thy fathers have known, even wood and stone, serving different gods, serving other philosophies. Now the wood is a symbolic representation of the religion of Christianity because the cross is the symbol of Christianity. And the stone represents the Kaaba stone over in Mecca, which is the centerpiece of the religion of Islam. These would be the major two philosophies throughout our captivity that our people would be following. And their identity and their not and the knowledge of themselves has been stripped away. Okay? As the scripture says, my people are destroyed for a lack of knowledge, a lack of knowledge of who they are, their original dialect, their original uh, uh, culture, their ethnicity, and the name of their heavenly father. All that has been stripped away through captivity and slavery. Now, let's go to the book of Isaiah. Let's go to the book of Isaiah, the 28th chapter. Isaiah 28, verse 11. For with stammering lips in another tongue will he speak to this people. For with stammering lips in another tongue. Another tongue represents another dialect and another, uh, another language. And the stammering, stammering lips represents the different pronunciations of, for the dialect of the words. That's the stammering lips representing, you know, the pronunciation of how you pronunciate different words in another language. That's how the Most High said, for with stammering lips and another tongue will he speak to this people. How will he speak to us in the Western Hemisphere? The Bible. And this Bible was translated into English so that we in this Western Hemisphere can understand it. We throughout North America can understand it. In Central America, it was translated into Spanish. In Brazil... It was translated into Portuguese, as well as in uh, the Caribbean islands where our people speak French in Haiti, as well as in Puerto Rico, Dominican Republic, and Cuba. It was translated into what? Spanish. So the Most High is perfect in all his doings because he knew he was going to scatter the 12 tribes of Israel amongst the nations. So what it was, what he did, he worked upon the minds of men to translate his word into a dialect in which the people could understand. So when the Bible was translated... It was translated into the various dialects of where we were scattered at. That's how we're able to come back to the knowledge of knowing we're the Hebrew Israelites. But our pure, authentic Hebrew language that we spoke, we don't have that anymore. You see, the so-called Jewish people that call themselves the Jews, they speak a bastard Hebrew, which is Yiddish, which is a mixture of the Hebrew and the Slavic dialects of Eastern Europe. That's not the pure Hebrew. Okay? And the pure Hebrew as Abraham spoke it is not on the earth today. That language will be given back to us in the kingdom. 
as we go on, I'm going to show you that. Now, let's go to the Apocrypha. Let's go. And we're going to read the Apocrypha. Okay? Which were the 14 missing books that were separated from the Bible. And this is the word of the Most High. Also, this, this, this Apocrypha lied between the books of Malachi and between the book of Matthew. These books were taken out by the so-called Caucasian man to hide the explicity, the prophecies, and the true facts of the Most High in Christ. And it also was taken out because it prophesied a lot of his downfall and his demise, okay, throughout this Apocrypha. Okay, so there were reasons why. They took this book out. And the word apocrypha means a way hidden, meaning they separated this book from the Bible. But it is canonized, it is valid, and it is part of Scripture. Now, we're going to go to Ecclesiasticus, and we're going to read on page 70. Okay? Wherefore, let me entreat you to read it with favor and attention, and to pardon us, wherein we may seem to come short of some words, which we have labored to interpret for the same things uttered in Hebrew and translated into another tongue have not the same force in them. And not only these things, but the law itself and the prophets and the rest of the books have no small difference when they are spoken in their own language. You see that? So when you're speaking the pure authentic hebrew that abraham that isaac that jacob spoke that the 12 tribes of israel spoke our ancestors when we were in the land of israel it sent a stronger vibration with the most high especially when we prayed when we prayed in the hebrew when we spoke the words of the most high in the scriptures um it sent a stronger vibration when it's spoken in hebrew well today Many of these different Israelite groups claim that they have the pure authentic Hebrew. That Lashuan Kodash that they speak, they claim that that's the pure Hebrew. But that's not. Because any Hebraic scholar will tell you that that's not Hebrew. Well then, you know, some would say, well that's Aramaic. The prophecies in the, in the scriptures were not recorded in Aramaic. Okay? So that is not the pure Hebrew. That Lashuan Kodash that the, a lot of these different Israelite groups that you hear them on YouTube and out on the streets and in their schools teaching, that Lashuan Kodash is not the pure Hebrew, okay? And that is not the language of the prophets. And that is not the language of the Most High in Christ. No, that's not the pure Hebrew, okay? And again, all you have to do is talk to any Hebraic scholar who studied the ancient Hebrew or studied the Hebrew as we have today. They will tell you that that's not Hebrew. You see, the original Hebrew, I mean, the, the Hebrew that they have today has been polluted and diluted by so many different people all over the world that we don't have the pure tongue as it was spoken during the time of Abraham. Okay? We don't have it. But I'm going to show you. It will be given back to us as we go along in the show. I'm going to prove that to you. Let's go to the book of um, Second Ezra. Second Ezra. In the Apocrypha. We're going to go to Second Ezra, the third chapter. And I'm going to show you something. Let's get 2nd Ezra, the third chapter, and we're going to start at verse 28. Are their deeds then any better that, uh, are their deeds any better that inhabit Babylon, that they should therefore have the dominion over Zion? For when I came thither and had seen empties without number, then my soul saw many evildoers in, the, in this 13th year so that my heart failed me for I have seen how that thou suffered them sinning and have spared wicked doers and have destroyed thy people and has preserved thy enemies and have not signified it now let's read 31 there's a reason why I'm reading this They'll just stay with me 31 I do not remember how this way may be left are then they are are they are they then of Babylon better than of Zion or is there any other people that knoweth thee beside Israel? Or what generation has so believed thy covenants as Jacob? Now what Ezra is doing, he's praying unto the Most High. And he's speaking in the pure Hebrew. And he's praying unto the Most High to give him an answer of the things that are concerning his heart. Concerning the children of Babylon excelling higher over the children of Israel. 
Let's jump down to uh, chapter four, verse one. Now, when Ezra prayed this to the Most High, this is what the Most High did. And the angel that was sent unto me, whose name was Uriel, gave me an answer. So Ezra prayed in the pure Hebrew. Remember what we read in Ecclesiasticus? That, when he, that, that, that the Hebrew strings are, sends a stronger voice and a stronger vibration with the Most High when you pray in the Hebrew, in the original pure Hebrew language. The Most High hears your prayers and sent the angel Uriel to speak to Ezra. If we had the pure Hebrew as Ezra had, we would be able to call on upon the Most High and he would send angels to, to, to commune with us. He would send angels to talk with us if we had the pure Hebrew the way Ezra had it. You understand the pure dialect? We would be able to call upon the Most High and the angels would speak to us. Because the pure, authentic, pure Hebrew sends such a stronger vibration with the Most High than any other dialect on earth. So that shows you again we don't have the pure Hebrew. Because I think again, if, if you Israelite groups claim that you have the pure Hebrew, why is there so many different diverse names for the Heavenly Father? Yahweh, Yehoah, Yehovah, Yahweh, Yah. Rastafarians call him Jah. Christians call him Jehovah. You call the Messiah, Yeshaya, Yehoshua, Yeshua, Yehoshai. And some Christians just call him Jesus until his true name is revealed to him. I have begun to just say Christ myself. Well, if you have the pure Hebrew, every every Israelite on this planet will be speaking the pure Hebrew. But we don't have it right now. OK, now let's go. Let's go to the book of Matthew. Let's go to the book of Matthew, the first chapter. OK. Let's get Matthew, the, small, the first chapter, we're going to read verse 21. And she shall bring forth a son, and thou shalt call his name Jesus. Now, we know that Jesus is not the Hebrew name for the Messiah. We know that. It's a Greek Latin word, which means Savior. Okay, when the Bible was translated out of the Septuagint, which was a translation of the 70, and then it was translated into the Vulgate text by St. Jerome, King James authorized 46 of the best Hebrew and Greek scholars of his day to translate the Bible into English. The 1611 translation is the best Bible to read to get the pure, authentic understanding of the scriptures. Okay? And he uh, employed 46 of the best Hebrew and Greek scholars to translate the Bible out of the Septuagint. Okay? Now, we know that the word Jesus is not Christ's name. We know that the Messiah's name was not Jesus. But what does the word Jesus mean? It means anointed. Okay? When you use the word Yeshua or Yehoshua, would be translated as anointed. I mean, uh, Savior. The word Christ means Savior. And the word, I mean, the, the, the word Jesus means Savior. And the word Christ means anointed. So he is the anointed Savior. Understand? So when you say Yahushua or Yeshua, you are saying Savior, and the word Christ means the anointed. Now, now we know that, again, Jesus is not his name, but we truly do not have the true name of Jesus Christ. As we speak today, we truly don't know. Again, if we did, there wouldn't be so many diverse Israelite groups speaking his name in different, in diff, uh, different uh, interpretations. Yahushua, Yeshua. Um, again, uh, uh, Christ or Jesus, Yahawashai or, uh, Yeshaya. Uh, if we had the pure Hebrew, we would know his name. We don't have it. As of right now, we don't have it. Okay. We're, we're going to prove it even further. Let's go to the book of Acts. All right. Let's go to the book of Acts. And this scripture is just to solidify those that out there that don't believe that, uh, the Most High sent who the world calls Christ to be our Savior of the nation of Israel. This is to all the, all the people out there that truly do not believe on the Most High in Christ. Here's the book of Acts, the fourth chapter, verse 12. Neither is there any and neither is there salvation in any other. For there is none other name under heaven where under heaven given among men whereby we must be saved. And we know that name today is Jesus Christ. 
right? But we, but what is his Hebrew name? We don't know his true Hebrew name. Let's start at verse 10. Be it known unto you all and to all the people of Israel that by the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, whom ye crucified, whom God raised from the dead, even by him doeth this man stand here before you whole. This is the stone which was set at naught of you builders, which is become the head of the cornerstone. Neither is there salvation in any other, for there is none other name under heaven given among men whereby we must be saved. So we know that Jesus Christ is not the name because he was Hebrew. So what was his Hebrew name? We don't know. We don't know until Christ comes back and reveals his name to us. Okay. Now let's go to the book of, of St. John, the eighth chapter, because if, if you brothers had the true name, all Israel would be speaking the same thing. I'm going to show you as we go on. Here is the book of St. John, the eighth chapter, verse 21. Then Jesus said again unto them, I go away and ye shall seek me and, and shall die in your sins. Whither I go, ye cannot come. Then said the Jews, will he kill himself? Because he saith, where, whither, I mean, whither I go, ye cannot come. And he said unto them, ye are from, a, from beneath, I am from above. Ye are of this world, and I am not of this world. So, on the throne of the Heavenly Father, and Christ is sitting on the right-hand side of the Heavenly Father, what is his name? If, when he came down on earth, and took on a body the angel told joseph that this would be his name all right but we we know that jesus is not his name but what was his hebrew name when he was on earth we don't know and when he's sitting on the right hand side of the father in heaven right now what is his name because the word that we use jesus means savior right when he came on earth and took on an earthly body but what is his heavenly name we're going to deal with that what would be his heavenly name? That's the mystery. Let's go to the book of Zephaniah and let me show you that you brothers that you truly don't have the name of the Most High and the name of, of Christ. You don't have it. No matter how much you, you say that you do, you don't have it. And I know, again, many of these other Israelite groups will probably attack me, shake their head. This kid doesn't know what he's talking about, you know, blase, blase. But I'm going to show you that you truly don't have the pure Hebrew. Now, here is the book of Zephaniah, the third chapter. We're going to read verse 8. Therefore, wait ye upon me, says the Lord, until the day that I raise up to the prey. For my determination is to gather the nations that I may assemble the kingdoms to pour upon them my indignation, even all my fierce anger, for all the earth shall be devoured with the fire of my jealousy. Now, this is Revelation, the 16th chapter, verse 16. This is the battle of Armageddon. When Christ makes his second coming and comes against all the armies and all the nations and subdues them and takes them down, sets the nation of Israel back up in his rightful position as the rulers of this earth, then verse 9 comes into existence. For then will I then, for, for then will I turn to the people a pure language that they may call upon the name of the Lord to serve him with one consent, with one mind. Once Christ takes the nations down, sets the nation of Israel back up in its rightful position as rulers upon this earth, then he will reveal to him what his true name is. He will reveal to the, to the children of Israel, to our nation, the ones that have been chosen to enter into his kingdom. He will then reveal his true name to the children of Israel and to the whole entire world and the whole entire world shall call upon the name of the Messiah with one mind and with one consent. See, verse eight hasn't happened yet. That's why I was trying to tell you, brothers, you don't have the name of the most high and you don't have the name of Christ, because if you did I mean, have the name of who the world calls Christ, because if you did, there wouldn't be so many diverse names for him. He would only have one name. The scripture says, verse 9, for then will I then for then will I turn to the people a pure language that they may all call upon the name of the Lord to serve him with one with one consent, meaning with one mind. And the whole world will know his name. The whole world will know his name, and everyone will call upon him with one consent. You see how all the Muslims call upon that false god Allah? 
regardless of wherever they are on the planet earth they all call upon that name Allah and they all call upon that false prophet Muhammad right as his messenger so called messenger but what about the children of Israel today the Hebrew Israelites our nation our brothers and sisters that have come back to the knowledge of knowing that they're Hebrew Israelites do they all call upon the name of the Heavenly Father with one consent and to those that do believe on the Messiah are they all calling upon him with one mind and with one consent no they're not they're calling them by various other names well that's not what the scripture says this scripture says for then will I turn to the people a pure language the pure dialect and the pure language that Abraham that Isaac and Jacob spoke the pure language that that Adam and Eve spoke the pure dialect that was spoken in in the beginning of time when the Most High began to reveal himself to to man that's the pure Hebrew of what the world calls Hebrew because the pure language that the Most High spoke through his prophets was Hebrew that was the pure dialect dialect to those that don't have understanding in the scriptures you wouldn't know that and that's another show because after Genesis the 11th chapter and the destruction of the Tower of Babel the Most High confounded the language but it was the, 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 the seed through Ebar that kept the pure Hebrew dialect coming down into Abraham the Most High confounded the whole entire language and spread the four other people abroad the earth throughout the four corners of the earth but it was the line of Ebar that kept the pure dialect as it was spoken during the time of Adam and Eve and to the to up to the time of Abraham and then to the children of Israel you understand so that's the pure dialect that was spoken then and these men communicated with the Most High through his angels we don't do that today why because we don't have the pure Hebrew the pure dialect that was spoken then we don't have it so when the scripture says he will turn to the people a pure language then we will call upon the name of the Most High in Christ with a pure dialect with one mind and with one consent and that pure language that pure authentic Hebrew that the prophets spoke that Abraham spoke that Adam and Eve and Noah and all the people of old spoke we will speak that dialect back again right now we don't have it okay Let's get the book of Revelations, the 19th chapter. Let's get Revelations, the 19th chapter. We're going to start at verse 10. And then, and I fell at his feet to worship him. And he said unto me, see thou do it not. I am thy fellow servant and, uh, and of thy brethren that have the testimony of Jesus. Worship God. For the testimony of Jesus is the spirit of prophecy. Again, we know that his true name is not Jesus. Verse 11. And I, and I saw heaven open. Behold, a white horse. And he that sat upon him was called faithful and true. And, and, in, his righteous, and, and, and in righteousness he doeth judge and make war. His eyes were as a flame of fire. And on his head were many crowns. And he had a name written that no man kneweth but he himself. When the scripture says that he had a name written that no man kneweth himself but, but himself, that's his, his heavenly name. That's the name that he has right now sitting in the celestial realm with the Father on the right hand side of the Father. He had a name that no one knew. Even when he spoke to his apostles and disciples when he was on earth, they don't know his heavenly name. They knew the name that he took on when he came down upon planet earth and spoke among the congregation of men. But they don't even know his heavenly name. You understand? That's the mystery. That's a mystery that most people don't understand. See, they read the book of Revelation, the 19th chapter, and that scripture goes right over their head, the 12th verse. When he was on earth, his apostles and disciples knew his earthly name when he took on a body and came down. But what was his heavenly name? Let's read it again. Revelation the 19th chapter verse 12 his eyes were as a flame of fire and on his head were many crowns and and he had a name written that no man knew it knew but he himself he had a name written that no man knew now remember John the revelator was one of his apostles so why wouldn't he know the name why wouldn't he know the name let's read verse 13 and he was clothed with a vesture dipped in blood and his name is called the word of God his name was called the word of God but what that was the definition of what his name meant but what was the name 
The definition was called the word of God. The definition of his name was called the word of God. But what is actually the name? Because no man do you know was walking around saying my name is the word of God. No man that you know w walks around on earth saying, well, my name is the word of God. His name is defined the word of God. But no man knows the actual name. You understand what I mean? So no man, even John the Revelator, didn't know what his name. John was one of his apostles. And the Lord allowed John to see these visions. These apocalyptic visions all throughout the book of Revelations. But Christ never revealed his heavenly name to John the Revelator. That's Zephaniah the third chapter, verse eight and nine. He will turn upon turn upon to the people a pure language, and then we will call upon the name of the Lord with one consent. He will reveal his name in the heavenly Father's name in that day, when he's in his one thousand year millennial reign upon planet Earth, where the one third of the children of Israel who elected to follow the Lamb will be in his kingdom and all the nations that are going to be submissive and sub, uh, subservient under israel will know hit the name also the whole world is going to know well you say well christ taught the disciples the name he spoke in the name of the most high when it means he spoke in the name of the most high he spoke in the name of the most high's righteousness just like i'm coming on this video and i'm speaking in the name of the most High. i'm speaking in the name of his righteousness so when he declared his name the Father's name, he declared the righteousness of the Heavenly Father. That's what we do today. When we speak the Bible and uh, speak the Bible and we teach scriptures about the Most High, we're declaring the righteousness of the Most High. And some of these brothers truly think that they have the name of the Most High, but they don't. Because we're not all calling upon his name with one consent and with one mind. Understand? To those that have the Holy Spirit, let the Holy Spirit open up your understanding so that you will know and you can understand. But the Holy Spirit is not given to every brother or sister, so they will still remain blind and their eyes will be shut. But to the ones that have light, that let the Holy Spirit guide them, you will see these scriptures and you will see what the Most High is saying. Okay? Now, let's go to the book of Hebrews, the first chapter. Let me give you more proof. Let me give you the, uh, more proof. Let's go to the book of Hebrews, the first chapter. Let me show you something. This is Hebrews, the first chapter. Okay, let's read. God, who at sundry times and in diverse manners spoke in time past unto the fathers by the prophets, has in these last days spoken unto us by his Son, whom he had appointed heir of all things, by whom also he made the worlds, who being the brightness of his glory and the express image of his person, in upholding all things by the word of his power when he had by himself purged our sins sat down on the right hand of the of, of the majesty on high being made so much better than the angels has up has he he as he has by inheritance obtained a more excellent name than they now the fourth verse is the mystery let me explain again. Let's read three. Who being the brightness of his glory and the express image of his person in upholding all things by the word of his power, when he had by himself purged our sins, sat down on the right hand of the majesty on high, being made so much better than the angels, has as he as he has by inheritance obtained a more excellent name than thee. What does it mean when you gain something by inheritance? That is something that is given to you, that is delivered to you, that is righteously and rightfully owed to you and delivered to you. When Christ came down from heaven and, and uh, died for the sins of Israel, he did a glorious work in the eyesight of the Most High, that the Most High gave him a new name. I'm going to prove that to you now. Some of you out there like, whoa, whoa, whoa. I'm, I'm going to show you. That was his inheritance. Let's, look, let's open up your mind now. Let's open up your mind. We've all watched mid medieval movies, right? Like Excalibur and Robin Hood, you know, Conan the Barbarian. We've watched all these different so-called medieval movies, right? King Arthur and the Knights of the Round Table. When you watch these movies and the king of that 
village in that kingdom sends his army to go out and fight against a rival army that's threatening his kingdom. He may send one of his trusted, loyal servants who's, who's known all throughout that village as being a, a vigilant warrior, a vigilant soldier. He leads an army to go out and fight against this rival army that's threatening their kingdom. He subdues them. He overthrows them, right? And when he comes back into the village and into the whole kingdom, the people rejoice and celebrate his victory that he led to conquer a rival enemy, right? When he comes back and presents himself before the king, the king gives him such an honor that he pulls out his sword, puts it upon his right shoulder and knights him and gives him a new name, changes his name from what his name used to be and gives him an honorable name that all the, the people of the land will honor him because of the glorious work that he did in defending their kingdom. We've ever, you ever watch movies like that? I have where their names are changed. This man has been knighted and given honor all over that kingdom and has been given a new name. When Christ came down and did this glorious work for the kingdom of the Most High, the Most High gave Christ a name sitting on the right hand side of him, a name in which no man knew, but he himself. That's why Revelation, the 19th chapter in the 12th, in the 12th verse tells you that he had a name on him that no one knew. See, the Most High gave him a name more glorified than the angels. So we're not going to know that name until he comes back and reveals that name to us. That's his earth. I mean, that's his heavenly name that we don't know. I'm going to show you this as we go on. I'm going to show you now. Look, let's go to St. John. I know a lot of you brothers out there still, the ones that are blind may not be able to see this. Let's go to the book of uh, Revel, uh, St. John, the 18th chapter. Let's read verse 36. Jesus answered, my kingdom is not of this world. If my kingdom were of this world, then would my servants fight that I should not be delivered to the Jews. But now is my kingdom not from hence. This world right now presently is not Christ's kingdom. So the honor uh, that Christ obtained in the kingdom of the most high is not being manifested here on earth as we speak. So that name, that righteous inheritance that the Heavenly Father gave him and gave him a name that he obtained much greater than the angels and all the all the beings of heaven except for the Most High is an honor in the heavens, but not here on earth. He said that my kingdom is not of this world. Let's read again. St. John 18, chapter verse 36. Jesus answered, my kingdom is not of this world. If my kingdom were of this world, then would my servants fight that I should not be delivered to the Jews. But now is my kingdom not from hence. You see that? So when his kingdom will be established, when the heavenly father sends Christ back to subdue all the nations and sets up his kingdom for a thousand years. Right. Then you read Revelation, the 21st chapter in the new Jerusalem is coming out of heaven from the heavenly father. And it will exist right here on earth. His name in the heavenly father's name will truly be revealed in all Israel. And the whole world will call upon the name of the Most High in Christ in that day. Christ will teach us what the name of the Most High is in his thousand year millennial reign. I'm going to go into another subject called the kingdom. And I'm going to show you about the kingdom of Christ and the kingdom of the Most High. There's going to be two kingdoms. His kingdom is to reign for a thousand years. And then the Most High comes and his kingdom merges with Christ's kingdom. And it's going to be one kingdom. Revelation, the 21st chapter, and I'll show you all the precepts to prove it. OK, there's going to be two kingdoms. OK, that old teaching, a lot of these other Israelite groups teach about Revelation, the 20th chapter and how we took the so-called white man down during the Roman Empire uh, and we ruled the Byzantine. And all that stuff is foolishness, man. I'm not even going to go into that because that stuff is it's not scripture. That's a false interpretation. That's a private interpretation. And how we ruled Europe for a thousand years and we pushed the Caucasian man up into the cold Caucasus mountains of Georgia, Russia. That's what Revelation, the 20th chapter is talking about. That's a lie. That's a false teaching. All right. That's not script. There's, 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 no, there's no scriptures to back that up. All right. We're not even going to deal with that. That's foolishness. Now, let's go to the book of Genesis. Let's go to the book of Genesis and show you that that process was done before about names being changed and honorable names being given to men that serve the most high. Here's Genesis, the 17th chapter. 
We're going to start at verse 1. And when Abram was 90 years old and 9, the Lord appeared to Abram and said unto him, I am the Almighty God, walk before me and be thou perfect. Was not Christ perfect? Yes. So because Abraham was perfect, this is what the Most High was going to do for him. And I will make a covenant between me and thee and will multiply thy seed, multi multiply thee exceedingly. And Abram fell on his face and God talked with him saying, as for me, behold, my covenant is with thee. And thou shalt be a father of many nations, neither shall thy name any more be called Abram, but thy name shall be, uh, be Abraham, for a father of many nations have I made thee. And that's what the name Abraham means. You see, so the heavenly father blessed Abraham because he was so righteous and so pure in spirit before the Most High that the Most High honored him and gave him an, an inheritance and called him the name Abraham. Now, in Hebrew... What does the name Abraham mean? In the pure, authentic Hebrew that he spoke during this time, what does that name mean in the pure, authentic Hebrew? All of that will be revealed to us in that day. But what I'm just doing is I'm showing you what the Most High did for Abraham, the same thing he did for Christ. Christ was perfect as the Most High told Abraham to walk, walk perfectly before me. And the Most High said this again, Genesis 17 and 1. And when Abraham was 90 years old, not, was was not, was when Abraham was 90 years old and nine, the Lord appeared to Abraham, Abram and said unto him, I am the almighty God, walk before me and be thou perfect. So he told Abraham to be perfect before him in spirit. And the blessing that he gave, that inheritance he gave to Abraham, Abram was to change his name to Abraham. That's the same thing he did to Christ. And, and, and listen, let's read uh, verse five. Neither, sh neither shall thy name any more be called Abram, but thy name uh, shall be Abraham, for a father of many nations have I made thee. That's what the name Abraham means. Well, when we go back to the book of Revelations, the 19th chapter, and, and the scripture says that, and his name was the word of God. What, what, what is his actual name that describes or defines the word of God? Just as uh, for a father of many nations have I made thee, and in the Most High changed Abram's name to Abraham, that's what the word Abraham meant. We don't know what, the, what Christ's actual name is, but we know the definition of the name of his word, I mean, the name of, uh, the name of his name is the word of God, but we don't actually know what his actual name is. That will be uh, revealed to us in, in his kingdom, according to Zephaniah, the third chapter, verse eight. And I'm going to show you more precepts to prove it. Let's go to the book of uh, Genesis, the 35th chapter. And let me show you that this process was done again. Genesis 35 and 10. And God said unto him, Thy name is Jacob. Thy name shall not be called any more Jacob, but Israel shall be thy name. And he called his name Israel. You see that? So Jacob's name was changed as an honor that the Most High gave him. He changed his name from Jacob to Israel. That was an inheritance that the Heavenly Father gave to Jacob. Okay? And changed his name to Israel. That's what he did to the Messiah. He gave him a name because of his glorious work that he did in dying for the sins of Israel. Okay? Purging them of their iniquity and reconciling Israel back to the Heavenly Father. He gave him an inheritance and gave him a name on the right hand side of the Most High. That will be revealed when he comes back and sets feet upon earthly soil again to reign as king of kings and lord of lords. Now, do you understand? Now, let's get Revelations as we begin to wind down. Let's get the book of Revelations now. Let's go back to Revelations, the second chapter. Revelations, the second chapter. And we're going to read verse 17. Revelations 2 and 17. Actually, let's read 16. Repent or else I will come unto thee quickly and will fight against them with the sword of my mouth. That's talking about all these different rebel groups and, and Israelite groups and Christians and Muslims and all these different people out there that are angering the Most High. He's telling all of us, including myself, to repent from any iniquity, anything that we have done. We fight hard as we can to repent from anything that we've done. 17. He that has an ear, let him hear what the Spirit has, uh, what the Spirit saith unto the churches. To him that overcometh, 
will I will I give to eat of the hidden manna and and will give him a white stone and in the stone a new name written which no man knoweth saving he that receiveth it. So we're going to be given new names in the kingdom. You see all these different Israelite brothers out there that have these so-called Hebrew names that they claim are Hebrew names. That's not going to be the name that you're going to be called by in the kingdom. But like your 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 um your earthly names that your parents gave you, your government names, you know, Jim or Joe or Joseph or you know, whatever your your parents named you on your birth certificate, that's not going to be the name that we're going to have in the kingdom to those that make it in or and are blessed to make it into the father's kingdom. Let's read again. That's not going to be the names. We're all going to be given new names. 17. He that has an ear, let him hear what the spirit saith unto the churches to him that overcometh. Will I give to eat of the hidden manna? The hidden manna represents the mysteries, the mysteries and the secrets. Okay. I'm going to show you something. The mysteries and the secrets is what that's talking about of the kingdom of the most high. And it says, and will give him a white stone. That means that you will not be like, just like you see a, a humongous stone upon ground. You can't move that stone. That stone may, may, may uh, weigh two or three tons. It's spiritually representing. It's an allegory saying that your feet will be planted upon solid ground and no man can remove you. And white is a symbolic representation of righteousness. Okay. And in the stone, a new name. And it's inside and edged in this stone, the Heavenly Father will give you a new name. And in the stone, a new name written, which no man knoweth, saving he that receiveth it. No man will know what your name means, except you that receiveth it. So we're going to be given new names. Just as Christ was given a name on the right hand side of the Most High, a name in which no man knoweth, we will be given a name in that day to those of us who are who are blessed to make it into his kingdom. We will be given a new name and that's the honor that we will be given and the inheritance. That's part of our inheritance. Okay, let's prove up. Let's prove some more. Let's go to Revelation, the third chapter. and We're going to read verse 11. Behold, I come quickly. Hold Hold that fast which thou hast, that no man take thy crown. Him that overcometh will I make a pillar in the temple of my father, and he shall go no more out, and I will write upon him the name of my God. See that? Then you will know the name of the Heavenly Father. See, all I wanted you brothers and sisters to do is just bear with me, listen to the whole video, listen to this whole show, and I'll show you that you don't know the name of the Most High. Not of yet. Listen. 12 revelation 3 and 12 him that overcometh will i make a pillar in the temple of my god and he shall go and he, and he shall go no more out and i will write upon him the name of my god in the name of the city of my god which is new jerusalem which cometh down out of heaven from my god and i will write upon him my new name my new name Revelation the 21st chapter comes into existence. The heavenly father's kingdom comes down upon earth to dwell among his people. Then you will know the name of the Most High. The Most High, uh, Christ said, I will write the name upon them. Meaning it'll be in your forehead. The name of the Most High will be in your mind. And, and also as a blessing, he will give you his new name. He will tell you what his new name is. Showing you that Yahweh Shai is not his name. Yahushua, Yeshua, Yeshia, Christ, those are not his names. Yahweh, Yahweh, Yehovah, Jehovah, God, um, Yah, Jah, those are not his names. We will know his true name in that day. Let's read it again. Revelation 3, Revelation 3, chapter verse 12. Him that overcometh will I make a pillar in the temple of my God. And he shall go no more out. And I will write upon him the name of my God and the name of the city of my God, which is New Jerusalem, which cometh down out of heaven from my God. And I will write upon him my new name. My new name, meaning you don't have his name. You don't know it. We don't know it as of right now. Okay. And then these other Israelite groups like to argue with other brothers out on the street. What is his name, brother? What is his name? You don't know his name because Christ has told you he had a name in which no man knew. So you don't know his name. 
you following those false prophets and those false teachers out here telling you Yahweh Shai is his name. Isn't that's not his name. That's not even the pure Hebrew you speaking. Again, just go to any Hebraic scholar that's got that stutters studies the uh, Hebrew, and they'll tell you that that so-called Lashuan Kadash that y'all are speaking is not even the pure Hebrew. Okay, so you're not even called upon his name correctly. Here's the book of Isaiah, the 62nd chapter, verse 1. Isaiah 62 and 1. For Zion's sake will I not hold my peace, and for Jerusalem's sake I will not rest until the righteousness thereof go forth as bright as brightness, and the salvation thereof as a lamp that burneth. And the Gentiles shall see thy righteousness, and all king, kings thy glory. And thou shalt be called by a new name, which the mouth of the Lord shall name. That's crystal clear right there. So all you brothers that have these so-called Hebrew names now, that's not going to be the name in which you're going to be called in the kingdom. And to all you brothers and sisters out there that are, that are striving to get to the kingdom, you will be called by a new name. Let's read again. Isaiah 62 and and uh two and the and the gentiles shall see thy righteousness and all and all kings thy glory and thou shalt be called by a new name which the mouth of the lord shall name he's going to give us new names christ is going to give us new names that's the honor that christ is going to give each man and woman in israel a new name as the heavenly father gave him a new name when he died for the, uh, the sins of israel he he blessed christ Glorified him and gave him a name in heaven, a new name. That's why he said, I will teach you my new name. You don't know his name. Not even the disciples in heaven know his name. Okay, three. Thou shalt also be a crown of glory in thy hand, in, in the hand of the Lord, and a royal diadem in the hand of thy God. You see, you will be a royal diadem in the hand of God, meaning you will be a nation of priests. Because priests wore the diadem or the mitris. You will be a royal priesthood in the hand of the Most High. To the one third that is blessed and chosen and elected to make it in. Okay? Let's get Isaiah, the 65th chapter, verse 15. And ye shall leave your name for a curse unto my chosen. For the Lord God shall slay thee. And, and call his servants by another name. That's what Esau did, the so-called Caucasian man. When taking our people into captivity, he gave us his names. But the Most High in Christ said, I'm going to take those names away from you. And I'm going to give you a new, I'm going to rename you with righteous and holy names. Esau gave you names after himself. That was the curse that Esau put upon us. That's how I know we the children of Israel. No question, no doubt about it. I know we the Israelites because who's the only race of people that he's that 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 that, that has happened to, that the so-called Caucasian man has done that to us. When he took us into captivity, he gave us his name, his slave names. Let's read again, Isaiah sixty-five and fifteen. And ye shall leave your name for a curse upon you, and ye shall leave your name for a curse unto my servants. Unto my chosen, excuse me. Who are the chosen of the Most High? Let's let's prove it. Let's go to the book of Isaiah, the forty fifth, the forty first, the, the forty fourth chapter. This is Isaiah forty four and one. Yet now hear, O Jacob, my servant, and Israel, whom I have chosen. Isaiah forty four and one proves that Israel is the chosen of the Most High. So when you go back to Isaiah sixty five and fifteen, and it says, "And ye shall leave your name." For a curse unto my chosen, we know that that was talking about the, the Caucasian man leaving his slave name upon us for a curse. And it says, for the Lord God shall slay thee, slay Esau, and punish him for his iniquity that he's done to us. And the iniquity that he's created all over the earth. And call his servants by another name. So we're going to be given new names. What make you think that the Most High, I mean, didn't give Christ a new name? Okay. Let's get Ezekiel as we begin to wind down. Let's get Ezekiel and we'll shut it down after a few more scriptures. But let's get the book of Ezekiel for a minute. Let me show you a few more precepts. Here's Ezekiel the 11th chapter. Ezekiel 11 and verse 17. Uh, Ezekiel 11 and 17. 
Therefore say, thus, therefore say, thus saith the Lord God, I will even gather you from the people and assemble you out of the countries where ye have been scattered, and I will give you the land of Israel. You see that? And they shall come thither, and, and they shall take away all the detestable things thereof, and all the abominations thereof from hence. And I will give them one heart, and I will put a new spirit within you, and I will take the stony heart out of their flesh, and I will give them a heart of flesh. You see that? Meaning this, is that whatever Israel has done to anger the Most High, the Most High still chose Israel and will forgive Israel of his iniquity and still choose Israel. That's why the scripture tells you all Israel shall be saved. The ones that believe on the Most High in Christ and give their life to these scriptures and teach these scriptures, the Most High will give you a new heart and a new mind and a new spirit. Okay? Listen. And I will give them one heart, one heart, meaning one mind, and all Israel shall call upon the name of the Lord with one mind and with one consent, right? And put a new spirit within you. You will have a Holy Spirit dwelling in you, all Israel, men and women, okay? And will take the stony heart out of their flesh. The stony heart represents a stubbornness, stiff neck, and rebellion, okay, of their flesh. And, a, and will give them a heart of flesh, a softened heart. That we would not be bitter and angry towards our brothers and sisters. There wouldn't be no more hatred. There would be no more uh, adversity, no more envy, no more jealousy among Israel. Our heart would be flesh, meaning it, the, the Lord will soften our hearts and make our hearts more loving toward our brothers and sisters. The way Israel is now, we have a stony heart toward our black women. We have a stony heart toward other brothers that are not in our organization. You're not in our school, so you're not our brother. You're not with us. You're not. You're not. You're not a part of our, our nation. You're not an Israelite because you're not with us. You know you're a rebel because you're not with us. I say a rebel is one who teaches hatred against his own people, and that's what a lot of these Israelite groups do. They fuss. They fight and argue. They slander. They gossip. They talk about other brothers. They come out on the streets and they rival with other brothers. That's the stoniness of the heart. Those brothers will not be in the kingdom. But to those that show brotherly love and sisterly love unto their people, those are or be the ones that will make it into the kingdom of divine rule. Not these other cats walking around with that Pharisee spirit, acting like a mob and acting like a gang, jumping up in brothers' faces, jumping on brothers, beating brothers up, attacking brothers, calling the cops on brothers, harassing brothers, slandering, gossiping, attacking other brothers, acting like the Pharisees. Christ is going to remove all that. All right? 20. They, that they may walk in my or my statues and keep my ordinances and do them and they shall be my people and I will be their God. You see that? Now, let's go to Isaiah the 43rd chapter. I got two more scriptures and then I'll shut it down. Let's go to Isaiah the 43rd chapter verse 7. Even everyone that is called by my name, meaning called by the righteousness of the Most High. Okay? For I have created him for my glory. He has created every one of you brothers and sisters that, you know, uh, uh, reject the Pharisee spirit, live according to the scriptures, or trying your best to live according to it. I have formed, uh, for I have created him for my glory. I have formed him. Yea, I have, I have made him. I have made him not only means his physical body, but gave us the wisdom, knowledge, and understanding. That's how he formed us. By giving us his divine knowledge and his divine truth that we may go back out and spread it to those that do not know. Okay, here is Ezekiel the 36th chapter. And we'll shut it down after this. Ezekiel 36 and 25. Ezekiel 36 and 25. Then will I sprinkle clean water upon you and ye shall be clean from all your filth. Regardless of what Israel has done. If they repent, the Most High is going to save you. So you can't throw out slanders against other brothers. You can't attack other brothers. 30 years ago, brother, you did this. 30 years ago, sister, you did that. The Most High said this again. Ezekiel 36 and 25. Then will I sp sprinkle clean water upon you, and ye shall be clean from all your filthiness and from all your idols. Will I cleanse you? A new heart also will I give you, and a new spirit will I put within you, and I will take away the stony heart out of your flesh, 
and I will give you a heart of flesh. Again, it reiterates on what we read before. So this video was to show all you brothers and sisters out there that you truly don't know the name of the Most High. We don't know it as of yet, but it will be revealed to us in that day. And with that, I want to say shalom to the nation of Israel. I know a lot of brothers out there are shaking their head. Some brothers are listening. Some sisters are listening, but some brothers are shaking their head. Well, to them, you're on your own. I did my job and I showed you according to the scriptures that you truly don't know the name of the Most High. And to all you brothers and sisters that are still questing for knowledge, listen to this video over and over and over again until you let the Holy Spirit resonate in your mind, your soul, and your body. And hopefully through the Spirit of the Most High, you will see the truth. And with that, Shalom.